the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Queen of Apostles, St. Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today in the first reading, St. Paul is talking to the Corinthians about those who are believers have received so much formation, especially in the moral law, and because they have been given the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that they should be able to judge matters of dispute among themselves instead of handing their situations over to what he called the unjust, probably because court systems in those days were not very, were not well programmed, I guess you want to say, or that because they were pagans, they didn't have the uh, good formation as the Christians did, so they should be able to settle the matters among themselves and not bring scandal, you might say, by handing these matters over to unbelievers. Uh, it would seem today that uh, uh, even in our day, that it would seem to be that a good basis for choosing a judge of any kind of judge uh, for Supreme Court or local court would be that do they believe in the natural law? Do they believe in the Ten Commandments, uh, which is the natural law written in man's heart? That would be a good uh, qualification for a judge to have. If they don't believe in the natural law, I don't think they are competent to be a judge. But uh, in his day, he was telling the Christians that they should be able to dis settle these matters of dispute among themselves as Christians. They should be able to come to to a, a fair and just uh, resolution of these things instead of going to the civil courts and bringing these matters to them. Uh, of course, our situation today uh, is much different than in the time of St. Paul, but still, I could still see uh, some justification for his uh, counsel there that when two believers, two Christians have a problem, they should be able to settle it uh, among themselves or with the help of other believers to come to a just resolution of the matter. If we believe truly in the gospel and we believe that we are uh, to, you know, that we can settle matters, that we should be able to do that without having to go to, uh, to a civil authority to do that. But of course, there are situations and cases where we do need uh, a higher court or a, a situation in which we need to bring matters to a court. But in this part here, then he goes on to say uh, some very uh, important um, reminders to us. You know, in this age in which we think that everything is inclusive, that, you know, that. Uh, uh, that, you know, we should all, that the church should somehow be this place. Yes, the church welcomes all into its midst. But there are, of course, certain behaviors and certain conduct which are not at all uh, proper, nor should it be in any way, uh, should it be tolerated by those who are believers. We heard yesterday in the first reading about a situation in which St. Paul was very upset with the um, Corinthians because they had a son living in, in, a, in a, an impure relationship with his mother. And uh, St. Paul didn't say, oh, you know, welcome them. And, and we, he says, throw them out. Hand him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. You know, marriage is not an ideal. Marriage is a reality. When two people uh, get espoused by the sacrament of matrimony, it doesn't, it is not an ideal. They affect the reality. The spouses become a representation of the, the fidelity of Christ to his church and the church to Christ. It affects what those two 
have um, espoused in a true proper marriage. It's not an ideal, it's a reality. And uh, there are people who cannot reach that ideal or that, excuse me, that reality because they don't have what it takes to effect it. They either have impediments because they're not, uh, they have divorced or whatever, and they're not, uh, cannot reach that uh, reality because they don't have what it takes or it's not the proper uh, situation that's not approved by God. Uh, so this idea that somehow, you know, we, we have to, uh, of course, uh, we, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. And we can't somehow, as he says here, uh, do not be deceived. You know, and he lists all those types of behaviors that are not going to be inherit the kingdom of God. Of course, uh, we pray and we work for the conversion of sinners, but at the same time, we cannot uh, uh, somehow give them a, a status that is uh, equal to something that is pleasing to God. Uh, we want people to come to church who are repentant of these things, not wanting to justify them. We want repentant fornicators and idolaters and adulterers. We, want, we don't want people coming to church who are wanting to somehow have those things approved of and now made virtuous. Um, this is the, you know, part of the misguided understanding of mercy today, that, and uh, that justice and mercy are somehow opposed, and rather, in fact, they both work together. Uh, and then, of course, you know, our Lord chose his apostles. After prayer, he picked and even named them apostles. It's a name given to them by Christ himself, because they are to be sent out into the world to bring the good news to all the world and to be his foundation stones upon which he establishes his church. And he uh, establishes that and sends them out and first forms them uh, through his own personal instruction and conduct and, and contact with them so that he has truly uh, prepared them for this great task. And so they have truly become the foundation stones of, of the church and of our faith because no matter where the church has gone, it has as its roots the apostles who went first before them and uh, established the church by ordaining bishops and bringing, and bringing about the apostolic succession which has this connection that we have, even in the 21st century, back to Christ and, the, and his uh, constituting of the church by his own mandate and command. When he establishes the apostles and then chooses one of them and says, you are a rock and upon this rock I will build my church. He then, you might say, uh, attracts others to this because he worked so many miracles. As we hear then, after he appointed them apostles, he went down and preached, and to bring others to faith, not just that you had to have faith, but many times our Lord worked miracles to bring people to faith, so they would therefore see something that was unheard of, or unnatural, or supernatural, or even more to put it that way, that would bring them about to Therefore, listen even more closely to his words and to accept his doctrine and to believe in him. And it says that all were cured from power that came out from our Lord. The power of grace in these healings, in these miracles, but also the power that he also put and placed in the hands of these apostles who went out to all the world. He gave them power, as we remember our Lord said, you know, they would have the ability to even handle serpents and, and do many wonderful and, and miraculous things to help establish his church and to bring the faith to a world that needed it uh, more than anything else. So today, as we reflect on this, that our Lord has established the church with its apostolic succession, we thank uh, God for establishing the church that we enjoy today, which has the same living uh, grace operating through it today, 
through the sacraments, through the priesthood, through bishops who have been appointed to be successors to the apostles, and that they need to hold fast to the same teaching of our Lord uh, in his day and in our day today, and to help bring about the conversion of our world, to bring about a better society, because the faith is what is needed in bringing about this conversion and, and development of, and bringing it to a higher level of, of existence on a Christian level and not a pagan level. Let us pray and ask Our Lady, the Mother of the Church and Queen of Apostles, to assist us today in our being uh, members of this living church to bring this grace to those whom we touch and meet today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.